This is the highly anticipated follow-up video to my initial uh, video about the Colossal Tech Cut 50. And I'm happy to say after two years, it's still going strong. I did have to replace this piece of hose on the back. Other than that, I haven't had to replace anything else yet. Well, not on the cutter itself. I have had some problems with the torch, however, and uh, I'm going to talk about those uh, right now. The first one is uh, I broke the trigger which is a little paddle that sticks out the front of this uh, trigger housing on the top of the torch. And I'm not sure how I broke that. I'm guessing it probably got stepped on or dropped. You can see mine is kind of messed up looking, and that's because I tried to epoxy it back together. And then I tried to speed up that process with a uh, heat gun and ended up melting the plastic. But it comes out pretty easily, or the leftover piece does. And I think I may be able to get a replacement part for this. If not, then I'm just going to fabricate something out of wood or bend up a piece of metal or something I'll, I'll make it work it actually works uh, without it and I'll show you how I do that but um, ideally I would like to have that trigger back on the bottom side of the switch you can see this little white button and this is your momentary it has a very very uh, shallow move um, to trigger it and it's got a very firm click when it does get triggered but I can get my finger in there to do it as long as I'm not wearing a glove so I'll actually, uh, for this video, just be doing it with my finger. I do recommend you use gloves, however, when using your uh, plasma cutter. Uh, one of the problems I had in my first video, which was almost two years ago now, was that I had not replaced all of the consumables before I made that video. And I got some comments in that video concerning uh, it not being a very fair um, review due to that. So in this video, I want to resolve that issue by putting in all new consumables. What you just saw me remove, though, I really don't think that that's um, worn out, and so I, I've i kept those, and I'll actually continue to use them a little bit. But, again, for the sake of the video, I figure I might as well just throw on some new stuff, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll get a little bit better results. And, actually, we do. You're going to see that coming up. Uh, I, I really only wanted to cut thick material in this video, but I thought just to show you... Uh, how capable this machine is. This is 16 gauge steel. I think it's 16 gauge. And of course you can see me zipping right through it. In all of these cuts, I have the, the cutter turned all the way up on the uh, voltage or amperage or whatever the knob is. And right now I'm running at 60 PSI. I'm going to be doing some other cuts at 90 PSI toward the end of the video, simply because one of the commenters from my first video mentioned that 60 PSI seemed kind of low. So we'll address that more in just a minute. I'm using a guide, again, to try to get a straight cut, except the difference is, in the last video, I was actually setting the uh, the porcelain bowl on top of the guide. In this video, I'm just dragging the tip right on the metal. And I actually think that you get a better cut by just dragging the tip. That first one was a 3 8 steel plate. And again, uh, the, the uh, heat is turned all the way up, if you will, and we're running at 60 PSI on the compressor. This is 3 8 aluminum plate. I usually don't have aluminum in my garage, but I happen to have this piece, so I thought I'd show you that this machine is capable of cutting aluminum. And it looks pretty good, I guess. This is the first time I cut aluminum, actually, was just for this video. So this is the 3 8 steel again, except now we're running at 90 PSI. And I honestly didn't notice while I was making the cut that it was doing any better of a job. It does seem like it's a little bit faster, maybe, but... Uh, I don't know. I really couldn't tell. And I'm not sure if the higher pressure will shorten the life of the consumables or not. Uh, I noticed that like on Miller's website, the Miller plasma cutters are, um, they suggest 90 PSI, but the manual for the Colossal Tech uh, suggests, I think it's 58, but I, I set it right at 60. Uh, so this is the 3 8 aluminum plate again, and this time at 90 PSI. And this cut seems to go pretty good I guess on that last uh, cut I made on the steel it took me a couple of passes and that wasn't the fault of the cutter that was just because I had uh, gone a little bit too fast in one area so it wasn't able to get all the way through but still I think that's pretty respectable speed for 3 8 this is the same 3 quarter inch piece that I tried to cut in my last video and you can see in the foreground that little nick in the corner was all I was able to do and I thought might as well try to cut this again um and much to my surprise, I got almost all the way through it on the first pass. So having a new tip, new consumables does make a big difference. Uh, there's probably about three sixteenths left at the bottom. And I think if I would have just grabbed a pair of pliers, I probably could have 
Well, maybe not. I, I might've been able to break that off, but I thought I would just continue to make multiple cuts until I got all the way through. Now you'll see I'm having a little bit of trouble getting the spark to go. And I think that that's because my power cord is, I think I've got a loose connection somewhere. I've had this happen a few times. Um, I'm not sure if it's the power cord or the ground, but I always just kind of flop both cables around and then I seem to be able to get a, a decent uh, uh, arc started. Uh, in that case, I think I had uh, moved the, the ground cable. So maybe there's an issue with my ground cable. I'm not really sure. One other small problem I've had is that sometimes when you let go of the trigger, it continues to blow air out of the, the nozzle. And I'm not sure uh, what's causing that. I've never tried to troubleshoot it, and I haven't researched online to see if other people have had this problem. But it's never really been enough of a concern to uh, to bother me. I guess if I were running a production shop or if time were money, then I'd be more concerned about it. But for garage use, it, it just doesn't bother me that much. So to me, it's not a big deal. If you're asking whether or not I would still buy this machine today, uh, the answer is yes. When my buddy bought this a couple of years ago, he paid $330. Uh, it was shipped for free and uh, $30 for extra consumables. I just checked on eBay, and I found the exact same machine is now $275, so uh, $50 bucks cheaper. It didn't say if shipping was free, but um, consumables were down to 20 for the same amount as he paid for 30 So it seems like these machines must be becoming more plentiful because the price is going down. Uh, that's the 60 PSI cut of steel. That's the, uh, this one is the 90 PSI piece. You can see that little area where I went too fast and didn't cut all the way through on the first try. I don't know. They both have a little bit of bevel. And again, that may just be my fault, uh, from the way I'm holding the torch. And, uh, I think the 90 maybe has a little bit less slag than the 60 PSI. I, I'm not really sure if I'm going to switch back to 60 or stay on 90. I guess I'll probably stay on 90 just out of laziness. That's the uh, 60 PSI cut of aluminum, and that one is the 90 PSI cut. And they both look pretty good, I guess. I don't know. That's, again, the first time I'm cutting aluminum, so that's what you get. And there's that three-quarter inch piece, which I'm still pretty surprised I was able to get through. Anyway, I hope that answers some of the questions from the first video. If you have more questions or comments, post below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.